morning, friends. It was kind of surprising for me to be here today. I wasn't expecting to be here. I was going to be down in Kentucky. And um, a very dear friend of mine got terribly sick. Our brother, Lyle Mix, dying condition in the hospital. Mrs. Ferguson used to come here, her son dying also in the hospital. And so I didn't go and just stayed for them. And then Mr. Matheny of the uh, Pentecostal Church in New Albany on uh, Silver Street, just the past, uh, it's, between, it's on Oak and Silver, I think. And um, he, I was supposed to speak for him tonight, and I told him, cancel it out last Wednesday, and told him I'd wait till I come back from Indianapolis. And then just as I run into the hospital yesterday to see Brother Lyle, why, uh, I met him. And he said, well, I see you didn't go. And I said, no. He said, well, come on, speak anyhow. So uh, I guess the Lord willing, I'll be down there tonight to speak for Brother Matheny. And um, yeah, I told him that when we went down there, I was going to have a healing service for him. And I usually like to fast about three days before the healing service. So I told him I'd speak. And if anyone there would pray for him anyhow, just a uh, regular prayer line. Now... <clears throat> We got one more week, a week from next Monday now, the services begin at Cato Tabernacle in Indianapolis. And we trust that the Lord will bless us up there in a, an exceeding great meeting. As a child with Christmas anticipations, I'm waiting for that service. Uh, you just something about serving the Lord. We get so tired sometimes to look like we can't go any farther. And then... Uh, when you rest up just a day or two, there's something strikes you and, and you just got to go again. And, um, so today we are here for one purpose, that is to serve the Lord. Amen. And just before we have prayer and the reading of the word, I want to apologize publicly to Brother Neville. Uh, uh, yesterday, I stayed home from down in Kentucky yesterday purposely to preached for him on the broadcast. Next Saturday, God willing and Brother Neville willing, I want to speak on the morning broadcast next Saturday for Brother right. Neville. And uh, so he uh, was so gracious to forgive me. He's, he's, he said, I guess I took advantage of him, and he's one of those guys that can I can pass the compliment back. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, hey. expecting somebody. And what got me upset was early that morning when they called me to Brother Lyle and them in New Albany. And uh, I, it was just about 10 minutes to 9 o'clock, and I said, oh, I'm supposed to be on that broadcast in 10 minutes, and here me in Jeffersonville, him down there waiting for me. So I, Brother Woods called him yesterday, and I thought I'd let Brother Woods apologize for me first, you know. So he just penalized it to make me speak this morning. <laughs> Come on down. So here we was. And so we, we, were, we trust that, that God will will be in our services. I have nothing premeditated. Don't even know where to begin in the scriptures. Just picked up my Bible a few moments ago and run down. Amen. I had to get my Collins Bible because it's got a little bigger print. <laughs> I'm past 40, you know, so when you get 40 years old, anything close to you, you don't see it like you used to, you know. <laughs> Amen. How many knows that to be true? <laughs> yes, sir. Here not long ago, I thought, say, there's something wrong with me. I can't wear a green glass or a brown glass. It never could make me sick in the stomach. So I said, there's something wrong. I called up Dr. Adair, and I said, Doc, what color? Could you examine my eyes? Tell me what color glasses I have to have. He said, maybe I might tell you what. So I'll tell you, I'll just send you this over to Lowell to some specialist there on that. Well, I said, I don't know eye examination. I said, no, I got good eyes. I can stand and see a hair laying on the floor. He said, but... Better give you examination anyhow, and he'll tell you what color you have to have. So I went over there and come to find out he was a Christian brother, wanted to go back to Africa with me and do some operations. Said, now, them natives are very odd, see, so they won't let no knife come on, but they love you, and I want to give six months of free service to taking cataracts and things like that for the natives. And he said, right. when you go over, said, I'd like to give six months of my life to the Lord's service. I said, Doc, do you believe in divine healing? He said, every word of it. And he'd give me a testimony about one time when his throat and eye specialist, he said they called him a little baby to swallow him on those whistles. It got caught in his throat. So they went there and the baby was going away. They run to the hospital and there's nothing you could do. Said, I didn't know what to do. So I said, I just like stepped out of the room and I said, Dear Heavenly Father, 
help me to know somehow what to do for that poor baby. It's dying and I can't get nothing around to jerk it. And I don't know what to do. And so the baby, <coughs> the whistle flew out on the floor. <laughs> he said, how could it keep from believing? <laughs> Prayer changes things. <laughs> That's right. So he told me, we sat there and talked a little while and he had that little a dark room and he had the little thing come on there and I seen a little red light. He said, can you read that? I see it said 2020. I said, yes, sir. I could read either way, 2020. Then he put 15, 15. I could read it. And 10, 10, I could read it. He said, well, there's not too much wrong with your eyes. Then he put a little telescope out here. with a says, read that for me. And I noticed it. I could read it fine. He kept getting closer and closer. I began to slow up on my reading. <laughs> when it got about like this, I quit. <laughs> he said, I'll tell you before I ask you, you're past 40. I said, yep. That's right. I said, I'm 45. And he said, uh, he said, well, when a man... Passes for he said, don't see I've got by with it this long. He said, just like your hair gets gray, your skin gets wrinkled, hairs come in your ears and so forth. Mr. Egan can tell you that as a barber. <laughs> and uh, when you pass 40 years old, said your eyeballs get flat and they won't dilate. So now I'll tell you how to do it. So now you squint your eyes real close together and read that. Well, brother, I could read it if it's that close to me. Squint my eyes. Put my hands like that. Make a little telescope like you could read it. It isn't nothing wrong with your eyes. It's just the nature. Uh, a 40 years old people has to wear reading glasses. And so he wanted to make me some, and well, he did, but I, I never did like the things, you see, and I, I always never think about them, and I read sometime, and, but I just got me a Collins Bible, which is a, a little bit bigger print, and I thought, well, I just can't get used to wearing them, you see, and uh, you don't, you don't look, if I look off out like that, you can't see nothing, but you look down close, and it brings it up to you, so now you start reading like this, and first thing you know, you keep pushing your hand back. And while your arm's not long enough, so I to reach out to it. So that's that's the way it is. And so now the, the Lord bless. Now, I want to ask you something this morning before we start into the Sunday school lesson. <clears throat> what What is value? I've been thinking on it. If I had enough throat this morning, I'd preach on that subject. But my throat bad, and I've got this meeting coming up here, New Albany tonight. And then uh, also I've got the... the campaigns are starting. I just want to teach a while this morning from some scripture. But what is value? My mother, I don't I guess she's here. I don't see her anywhere. Is she? Yes. Uh, Mom, you're getting little. <laughs> so um, I asked her yesterday. I asked her the subject because I've been studying on. You ever get thing on your mind, you start studying? Brother Lepper, you've done that a many times. You start studying. What is value? And I began to think, I said, you know, if I had a hundred million dollars laying here in a pile, and I had a little button here, if I press this button, I lose my hundred million dollars, but I get to talk with my old dad that's gone on as one hour a mortal being again, what would I do? No hesitation, I'd press the button. I'd give a hundred million dollars this morning to set my dad down in this chair while I teach this lesson. So what's money worth? How much more is a soul than money? See? Uh, Mama, you remember when I had a little old T model Ford, little old 26 model? How I polished that thing. I was just a kid, about 16, 17 years old. I was a sinner then. And sometimes I was working with Mr. Ginther back there. And I'd, after Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, I'd go down and sharpen up all the bits and things for the air compressor and clean it up. Sunday afternoon, I'd polish that little old Ford until it looked like a paint had almost come off of it. What if I tried this morning to find one piece of that Ford? What if I tried to find one of those bits off that air compressor? The same time I could have been winning souls, I was polishing my Ford. I wonder where I value it. I worked on Sunday mornings up there as much as they'd let me. I appreciate it because I was in debt. And I... But where, where did it get me? What did it win? Brother Leppard, what if somebody come to you and, and I and Brother Neville this morning, all of us, here are the three of us, brother, and say, uh, ministers, I'm going to give each one of you a million dollars. Somebody was wor worth, to, to, could do it. And uh, I said, now, Brother Leppard, Brother Neville, I'll tell you what let us do. Let us go out and find all the poor people that we can. Let's make every little home happy. By getting the kitty some clothes and paying off the mortgage or buying this little place, we'd never miss it. 
a million dollars a piece while the interest off of it take care of much as we could do with that, put it in some good investment or something. And then what would we do? That would be fine. That, not let nobody know nothing about it. Our hearts would feel satisfied. But now, in a hundred years from the day, brethren, it would take a miracle of God if we're still living a hundred years from the day. You know that. Now we'd be in eternity. What good would the million dollars do or all the feeding of the poor and things that we've done? See, it wouldn't amount to very much. If I had a billion this morning, what good would it do us after we were gone? Well, let me tell you something. We haven't got that money. You're poor man. All of us are. That's right. We live by the alms of the people being ministers. But brethren, in Africa, one little black boy about this high, or a prostitute off the street yonder in Louisville, one soul saved, in eternity when that star is a shining under, our name will be wrapped into it. Amen. There's your value. Amen. It isn't how much you've got, how much you desire, it's how much you can do towards saving souls for Christ Amen. Jesus. Our money will fade. I polished that little old Ford, and this morning sitting up there in the garage is a Cadillac that they give me. But one of these days, that Cadillac will be like the Ford is. It'll be no more. But God will still be the same. Amen. But if I get a soul saved for Christ, brother, as long as there's an eternity, the glory of God will rest on that soul. Amen. So what is value anyhow? Amen. What good does it do when the struggles is in your throat and the doctor sees the pulse coming up your sleeve? What good's all the money and all the popularity? People to pat you on the back or you become a great person. What good does that do you? Not a bit. It vanishes and stays here on the earth. But one soul saved, you'll see your name wrapped into it as long as a morning star shall glitter in his eye. So let's save souls, brethren. Each one, you housewives, you don't have to be a preacher. You do something for the glory of God. Remember, eternal things is what's last forever. And that's getting souls saved. Let that be the first thing of all your work and all your ideas and all your motives. Amen. Yesterday, standing by holding a mother's hand, my arm around her and her chin quivering, and her boy laying there dying. She said, Billy, I have long and long for you to come back to the tabernacle. I said, Sister Ferguson, uh, I'd like to do that. She said, I said, well, look, sister, or I could get maybe 50 souls saved a year in the tabernacle. That'd be a good crop for a year. I can get 100,000 of them saved in some other land. Amen. And when I walk into glory, I don't want to, if God saved me, he's done save me. That's settled. But the thing of it is, when I get there, I want to look around and see the stars shining. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. I want to see something that makes something. If I, if I died and I was a great man, a president like Lincoln or something like that, they'd build big memorials, but one day it wouldn't be. But one soul saved in glory, your name will be wrapped in that as long as there's an eternity. Amen. Amen. Well, let us pray now. Our Heavenly Father, we so humbly come to Thee this morning. God, I'm glad that I woke up about 25 years ago to the fact that that happiness does not consist of the things of this world. It consists of the eternal things, what makes us happy in our soul. And how thankful I am this morning and grateful to you for your salvation and your grace that's permitted me, Lord, to see you around a million souls kneel at the altar. Oh, God, some glorious day when I cross over, I hope to see them all shining there as far as my brethren here, my sisters this morning, each one feels the same way. They were parting that, Lord, by their prayers and supplications and holding on to God, praying, talking to others and speaking highly of the things of God. And we trust today, God, if there be any in here that's not just where they should be or not yet accepted Christ as they should have, May this be the day that their one immortal, eternal decision will be made to serve you. Grant it, Father. May every Christian in here, may their heart burn within them to go out somewhere in the hedges and highways and to bring in lost souls. No matter how humble it is, they might bring in one soul that would bring in a million behind it. We don't know what we're doing. Sometimes these little mothers wonder, Lord. 
but they never know what they're speaking of when they're talking to a young person or some old person or something about their soul. Grant, Lord, now get into the Word. Lord, you are in the Word, and give us faith to make the Word live and act today in our lives and our beings. For we ask it in his name and for his glory. Amen. I'm not sure whether it was Dwight Moody. I believe it was the shoe cobbler of Boston. But one day, a little woman in the early Methodist days, she wanted to do something for the Lord. So she's washing and she saved her money, get a dollar and a half, I believe, to have an old preacher to come preach for her. She had a little delivery stable for a quarter or something for that night, cleaned out the stable and put the, the little wash bench down for an altar and just to show you how simple it is to you housewives now. You say, oh, Brother Bram, if I could preach, you don't have to. You know, it's your testimony, your influence, your life. And she got some tracks and went out on the corner uh, advertising the meeting and passed them out. Every time somebody get a hold of it, throw it down. Holy roller, fanatic, walk on. Okay? Little old boy come by with ragged trousers, his daddy's suspenders up over his shoulders, hair hanging down his face, said, Lady, why are you giving away? Set of tracks on. She handed it to him like that. He looked at it and said, I can't read. So well, it says there'll be a meeting tonight up here. To, oh, he said, it will. You mind if I come? I said, you won't. You must come, honey, if you can. All right, I'll do that. That night after all of her efforts and week, the old faithful minister come, got into the pulpit and prayed, sung a song, him and the lady, and she set out as his audience. After a while, staggering in the door, was that little ragged-looking kid with the hair hanging down his face. You know who that was? Dwight Moody. Amen. That night he knelt at the altar and sent a million Amen. souls to God. Hallelujah. You don't know what you're doing. Hallelujah. Speak a little word for Jesus. Amen. Testify, sing, or pray. And like bread upon the water, it'll return to you someday. Amen. That's right. All right. Just remember, don't fail. Don't fail. Win some souls. Whatever you do, Win souls. Uh, I'm glad to see our people here this morning. None of them in poverty as I know of. All wearing good clothes. and You're clean, intelligent looking people. I'm so thankful to God to know that you're that way. I come here, friends, one time during the Depression when I preached in overhauls and you walk for miles and in here and across the country and not enough to eat. And I know. That's right. I remember it. God's blessed us, and we're grateful to him, see. Amen. But this morning, see, how you look different this morning. I'm thankful for that, but never let that stop you. Remember where it come from, from Amen. above. Amen. And win a soul there that will last forever. And maybe it, the biggest part of it probably has a little bank account somewhere. I'm glad for that. And may God just richly bless that. But don't let that stand in your way of winning a soul. Right? Keep souls Amen. first. Amen. Now... I was thinking about maybe I asked Brother Neville, or you have no certain Sunday school lessons, so we just teach from anywhere, and somewhere in the Bible, and I thought about uh, teaching this morning as it's coming down for coming to the room about on the book of Revelations. Then I remembered that a radio program is running a, a series on the book of Revelations. Charles Fuller, I think, is running a, a book, and... Um, Brother Fuller is a typologist himself, and I was afraid we'd kind of get together on that, and you've already heard some of it. So I, and I thought we'd go over to the book of Hebrews. Is a good. How many likes the book of Hebrews? Oh, it's a great well, yeah. uh, Let's go over to about the 10th chapter. I think that's a beautiful chapter. I don't know where they've ever taught on it, but probably have here part of it. Usually get two or three verses, and then that settles it, and we get started off in the Bible. You know... Sometime when I come in on a vacation, I'm just so hungry to get one more time where to settle down to Tabernacle or somewhere here and just have a series of study like we used to take the Bible, just like on a certain book, and just, go, just comb it back and forth through the scriptures like this. Amen. It places and establishes our faith. Amen. That's what these lessons are for, is to establish our faith. Amen. Now... In the 10th chapter of Hebrews, I don't know why, just sitting in there, I just turned to it, and we want to read from here 
for a little lesson and teach it. And if we get down here, find out we've been into it before, then I'll, we'll turn it over to something else, or maybe the Lord will lead us to something else. <laughs> now, don't forget the services tonight at the tabernacle here, brother, uh, be speaking to us tonight. And if you got any friends around New Albany down there, Brother Matheny's will be speak there a little while tonight. And then Wednesday night, and Brother Junior Jackson, I heard him a man a while ago, but I've never been able to find him. And he's in the building, and his is Thursday night. And, um, and I believe he has Sunday night. Or he had Junior. I can't place you. Oh, no wonder you're sitting behind that big fellow back there. You're, oh, what, your service on Friday, uh, Sunday night too, is it, Junior? So, Thursday and Sunday. All right. And um, his services is tonight, and he's out on State Street, New Albany State, and um, Monroe. Brother Gensler, you can see it's been a long time since I read meters or fixed any services. <laughs> I forgot all the streets. But there's, um, I still love the same Lord Jesus that was with us then when helped me in those Amen. days. I was telling a brother a while ago, I used to go down there when I would be reading meters and knock on the door to read the meter and pull out my Bible and read a while before the lady got the door, something like that, and find a little empty building. Of course, you can't find them now. Of course, someone had moved out, go in there and go back in the shed and kneel down and pray. That was the making. That was the thing that established it there, looking to him. Now, the book of Hebrews is the, the dividing between law and grace. How many knows that we live by grace and not by law? I believe the writer, no one knows exactly, but it's so much like Paul, so I like to call it Paul's writing. And he was speaking to the Hebrews. Now, the gospel had already gone to the Gentiles because the Jews had turned it down, and they had went to the Gentiles with the gospel. And now Paul was writing back to the Hebrews, for many of them wanted to come back under the law, keep the law, and still believe in Christ. And you know that still exists today? There's people today who tries to keep the law of the Old Testament and still be Christian when one is very contrary to the other. If you do one part of the law, you have to do it all. Your indebtedness says the Bible to do all the law. So if you do part of it, and then if you keep the law as a sacrifice and Sabbath and obligations and eatings and washings and so forth under the law, but we're not under law now, we're under grace, and Paul is trying to show where the law was a shadow. Now in the beginning, here we see that, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comer unto perfect. Oh, my. Wouldn't that make a sermon right there? Now, the law was a shadow of things to come. Let's get over here just a minute. Turn with me back to... I believe it's the 12th chapter of Revelations. Let's get over in that just a moment and see if we can't get just a little bit of something good right here to start with thinking of shadow. Now, let's, um, let's read again now, you with your Bible. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman. What does woman represent in the Bible? Church. A woman clothed with the sun, that was her garment she had on, see? And the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown, and twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried in travail in birth, and pain to be delivered. Notice, a woman appeared in the skies to the, the vision of John the Revelator, and the, she was clothed with the sun, and the moon was under her feet, and she had twelve stars in her crown. Now, what did that symbol? Visions are symbols. Now, the woman is the church, and the church was, the moon was under her feet. In other words, it was still shining, but she was above it, 
because she had already become in a condition that she was bearing a child. She was travailing in birth. And the moon was passing away and the sun was shining. Now, the moon is, what makes the moon light is the sun shining on it. It's just the shadow of the sun. And therefore, the moon had lived its day out and the sun was rising. The woman wasn't clothed with the moon. She was clothed with the sun. It was a gospel church coming into existence. The old Orthodox church. Now you say, well, was that the Orthodox? Yes. Jesus first came to the Jew and not the Gentile. See, he, he commissioned his disciples not to go to any Gentile. He said he came to his own and his own received him not. What? He said as he commissioned them in the 10th chapter of St. Matthew, he said, go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, Don't go in the ways of the city of Samaria or any of the rest of the way, but go first to the lost sheep of Israel. That's the reason the glorious sunlight was shining around the woman. And she being in pain, travailing to give birth to this child. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And the dragon stood by the woman, which was Rome, to devour the child as soon as it was born. And Rome did persecute the child. They sent forth and killed all the children from two years old up, uh, or two year old down rather, that they might kill Christ and catch him in there. Herod made this issue. But the woman's child was caught up to God. From the resurrection was caught up to God and sets on the right hand of God. Now that would just cut loose all the man-child doctrine, wouldn't it? See? But now the law, Hebrews 10 again, having a shadow of things to come and not the very image, but the shadow. Now, the other night I was discussing with a very fine person on the doctrine of the millennium. I said, I believe in the millennium because there's too many shadows of the Old Testament that speaks that there will be a millennium. There's got to be too many shadows. They said, will the church go through the tribulation? I said, no, the church can't go through the tribulation. It's got to go before the tribulation. Too many shadows. Look, that Noah in the beginning. Noah, all the Old Testament, all the law. Now it was a shadow of good things to come. Now before the tribulation period struck first, Enoch, the, uh, Noah. Noah was a type that was carried over like the sleeping virgin. But Enoch was translated. Just before the tribulation struck. And Enoch was tucked up and was found not because God took him. The type of the going forth of the church. And Noah watched him when he seen Enoch go. He knew it was time to enter the ark. For to be carried through the tribulation. The Bible said there was ten virgins. Went out to meet the bridegroom. And five were wise. Five were foolish. And they were all virgins. Every one of them. But five was wise. And they had oil in their land. And they went out to meet the bridegroom. And the bridegroom came. And the ones that had oil went in. See the translation. Going with the bridegroom. But those who were left behind. They come and wanted in too. Just like those who come and knocked on the door of the ark. Noah. Let us in. But God closed the door. An old friend of mine, one of these days, God's going to give you your final call. Amen. Then the door is going to be closed between mercy and judgment. Don't be left out. Get in now while you can. Don't pay no attention to what the world says. Get into Christ. 
or those that are in Christ will God bring with him? Amen. See, then this wise virgin went away in the translation and these others who came and knocked on the door. What happened? What taken place? The Bible said they were cast into outer darkness where there were weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Israel, when the tribulation period hit Egypt, there wasn't one thing ever struck Egypt, uh, the Israelites, because they were in God's provided place, Goshen. No tribulations at all. See, the rest of them were in the tribulation, but not this one. Now, all those things being shadowed, they've got to type something. And then as we see the forecoming of the Lord, we see how people walked in those days. And see how people got heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's the way it is today. Men are walking after their own ungodly lust. If they come to the thing, excuse this expressions, my sisters, but it's come to real moral decency is the thing almost of the past among our people. Yesterday in St. Edward's Hospital, I heard a doctor tearing a girl to pieces back there. He got up the steps where I could shake his hand. Everybody in the hospital is listening, looking. There's a girl back there, some of these little ungodly clothes on little britches like. You know what the Bible says about that? He says it's an abomination in the sight of God for a woman to wear trousers like a man. Right. And there she was. Well, the doctor said a little cripple fellow. I don't know him, but I can't think of his name. He said, do you mean to tell me that the sister lets you get in this hospital like that? He said, well, you're a disgrace to the hospital. Get out of here. I said, boy, I want to shake your hand. Certainly. He said, how did you ever get by the front? Ain't you ashamed of yourself to come in here dressed like that? Oh, brother, that's right. I admire a man with enough courage to call right, right, and wrong, wrong. Or I say who he is. See, but the thing of decency. Oh, may I, you'll forgive me, won't you? I want to stop here just a minute. Now, I want me straighten this up just a little, my dear beloved friend. Don't think that Brother Bram's trying to be rude. I'm not. I'm only trying to tell truth. And what I know that yonder in glory someday... If I'd see your life smutted out and then I know that I was a cause of it knowing truth and wouldn't tell it. No, I'll lay it off of my shoulders onto yours. You make your decision. Amen. Oh, women that dress like that has an evil spirit. Amen. See? There's only one thing in the scripture ever did that. That was the devil stripped the people. Look, no, I don't mean to say you're immoral. I don't mean that, my dear sister. But you're in the trend of the day in such a way until you just simply, you think it's nice because the others do it. And you don't realize that that's the devil are doing that. Amen. Sure it is. You're not popular. You're crazy. Excuse Amen. the expression. Well, that's right. I mean, you're crazy the thing away from God. Oh, God's Holy Spirit. Not always striving with man, not willing that any should perish, but it all might come to repentance. God Amen. give us the courage in the day that when preachers, here's where it started from, is because your pastor Amen. at the platform puts up with it. That's so right. You ought to be excommunicated. If I had a church and women did that in a church, immediately would they go off the church boat. Amen. Yes, sir, right there. You straightened up. Amen. Correctly. God hold them responsible, but the day I went out to St. Joseph, I'm constantly on these hospital calls, these emergency, went out there to see a little baby dying cancer or kidney condition taken out one kidney only two, three days old. And how that the poor little fella, and there I noticed in the Catholic hospital, so nice and generous. I go to a Protestant hospital, there was a dying lady, and I walked over to put my hands on the chaplain's staff and said, now, let him know that I was the same denomination he belonged to. He said, ha, ha, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't put your hand on her. I said, the Bible said, oh, get out. So that stuff no good. Uh, we don't want you to put your hands on a sick person in here. See how it is. And that's the reason the Catholic Church is swallowing them up for the thousands. 
That's right. Because a Protestant hasn't went deep enough in God to have an experience to know what real old time heartfelt salvation of the power of God is. Amen. There's your mediocre class. There's your filled class waiting for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There you go. Notice the law having a shadow. All these things that we see now are shadows. Was shadows and now they're becoming positive. Just like a tree coming up and it becomes a branch, then it goes off into seed to produce the same kind of seed that went into the ground. Amen. All these things come out of Genesis. And today, now, but these worshipers who came under the shadow could never be made perfect. Let's dwell on that word there. Never. Well, for uh, year after year, continually make the comer unto perfect. I don't you love, have you heard many times of people say, oh, there's none perfect. That's right. You can't be perfect in the sight of your fellow man. But you've got to be perfect or you'll never go to heaven. Right. The Bible says, Jesus speaking in the Beatitudes, Matthew said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Then you've got to be just as perfect as God is, or you're a lost. Now, how are you going to do it? See? Now, one little mistake, and you're a lost. One little flack of the eye, and you're gone. Because nothing can enter into those places but perfect. Amen. God put Satan up there one time as an angel, which he was, the son of the morning. And he took the good things of God and perverted them into evil. God's sure that nothing will enter there and deliver to it again. See? Now you've got to be perfect. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, how are you going to be when you're continually sinning? When you're continually doing what's wrong? Now, this will kind of put a little kink in the legalist. But notice, it isn't what you do. It's what God has done. Amen. It's not what you do. It's what He done. See? You can't be perfect. You can't be in yourself, but in Christ you are perfected. You're not trusting in your own good works or your own church you belong to, but you're trusting in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. There you are. That's what makes you perfect. That's what anchors your faith. Then on divine healing the same way, I'm not trusting the way I feel. If I did, I'd be in the bed this morning. But I'm trusting on His Finished work. Amen. He said it. He promised it. I believe it. See? That's it. Be therefore perfect. Now, oh, may we get just a little bit to one side, something rolled up in my heart. Let me ask you something. We're living in the day of judgment now. Not the great judgment, but the calling out of the church. You believe it? We're living in the days of the segregation. There's a, a, retro, a, a color segregation trying to rise in the country. That's nonsense. But there is a real segregation time. Right from wrong. God separates his people. Calls them out. Do you know the very word church means segregated? Amen. Called out, separated. Amen. Come out from among them, says the Bible. Be not partakers of their sin and other uncleansiness, and I will receive you unto myself, and you'll be sons and daughters unto me, and I'll be God unto you. Come out. It's a separating time. And so much the more as you see this day approaching. The church that once tried to walk, they denominated themselves and now they become in one great big conglomeration of living like the world. 
Just as the Bible said they did in the Old Testament. So did they. Many of them. God called them out. Showed them miracles and wonders. And the whole generation perished in the wilderness. After they had seen miracles. After God had performed miracles on them. After they had seen the glory of God. But in their heart. They were unbelievers. Murmured at God. Complainers. God just said, separate yourself from Moses. Amen. And he started a new generation to take them over into the promised land. Notice, how many in here this morning are Christians? Would you raise your hands? Just raise your hands up on Christians. Amen. God be praised that you are Christians. How did you become Christians? Because you said, I, I want to become a Christian because that you sought God with tears. Because God by grace calls you. Amen. Right. Not because you sought him, because he sought you. Amen. Now, if you notice on the Baptist side or the Presbyterian, the Armenian belief, they all go to see. They say, well, if God called me, hallelujah, then I'm all right. I'll do what I want to. That shows you haven't got it and wasn't called. Amen. Right. If God calls you, you'll love him so divinely. And the things of the world will be dead to you. Right. The young fellow sitting back here taking recordings now. He asked me coming in, which is my, one of my brethren, Mr. Mercer. And he takes recordings of the messages and the meetings. And his partner, Leo, and, and a Gene back here. Leo said to me coming in this morning, he said, Brother Branham, which was first? Faith. Produces love, our love produces faith. I said, love produces faith. Amen. Not faith, love. You have to love first before you can have faith. Amen. So if you say you've got faith and don't divinely love God, your faith's in vain. Amen. You've got to love God. Therefore, you could join all the churches in the country, do anything you wanted to, make all the confessions you want to. But if there is a genuine one, Real Holy Spirit born again. Love in your heart for God, your faith's in vain. Yeah, no matter how much you confess that you believe God, that has nothing to do with it. It's got to be born in the human heart. Yeah. Then you got eternal life. You can never be separated from God. Now, if we had time, seeing there's not many of you with Bibles, but over in the book of the Revelation. Listen now, put on your thinking cap and open up your heart. Want to say something here now? I want you to listen close. While the Holy Spirit is near, the Bible said in the Revelation that the Antichrist would come in the last day and that he would be so rude. And over in St. Matthew, also 24th chapter, Jesus speaking, said when the Antichrist would come, that he'd, he'd be so close like the real work of God to he would deceive the very elect, if possible. Watch. Deceive the very elect. The elect. Where does it come from? From the word elected. He would deceive the very elected if it was possible. See? But it isn't. Praise God for that. It isn't possible. Like over in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, he said, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have been made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the heavenly gifts and the power of the world to come if they would turn and renew themselves and do repent. It's impossible. It can't be done. Amen. That's right. It can be impersonated. It can be pretended. People can act like they're so-and-so. And they can be swayed with every little thing. But a man that's ever born of the Spirit of God, his, his course is set towards the North Star. Amen. Hallelujah. All oh, hell never shaking. I don't say he won't make mistakes. I don't say he won't slip and fall. That's right. But as soon as he gets his feet again, his eyes are set on the star, Your Honor, and he moves on. Sure. 
elected. Now the Bible said, and I know that's the word of the living God. The Bible said this. Listen now. See? And the beast and the false prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, Sangler, and the beast, the power, the trinity of hell, just like the trinity of God. Allah. And he caused all, both small, great, that's rich or poor, bond or free, male or female, man or woman, child or whoever it was. He caused all, both small and great, to receive a mark in their forehead. And was sealed into the kingdom of darkness. Now there's two seals that are going on today. And you don't know just what time. Oh, brother. Let this go way down deep. You don't know what time that you that's on the borderline today is going to make your final decision. That's right. You can't totter too long. My spirit will not always strive with man. So you may toddle along for a while. But my spirit will not always strive with a man being on the borderline. Notice the mark of the beast is the mark of an apostasy. The devil. The works of the devil. Jesus said by their church membership, by their theology, by their seminary experience, by their fruit, Amen. you shall know them. Yeah. Now, so the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, Amen. patience, Amen. meekness. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And the fruit, that's the mark of the Holy Spirit. Showing that divine love has anchored in the heart. Amen. And the things of the world is dead. Amen. Now the mark of the devil is impersonation. Works. Not grace. The works shadow things to come. Hypocrisy. Going to church. Pretending to be a Christian. Living like the world. Having affairs with the world. Going out and acting like the world. And so very close to both sides will be looking exactly. To see the very, like here's a church member. Goes to church regular. A very fine person. Goes to church. Good person. Morally good. But yet right down in the depths of their innermost being. There's never experience of Jesus abiding. Amen. Look at Esau and Jacob. Why Esau was twice as good a guy as Jacob. Sure he was. But Jacob had one thing. He had recompense to the reward. He's seen that birthright and counted it the greatest thing on earth. And today we try to count going to church. Hearing Dr. So-and-so or Brother So-and-so speak. Doing things like that or joining a fine church with a nice group going on. Nice revival. We call that doing something good. That isn't it. God looks on the heart and the heart of Jacob. He didn't care about anything. Come or go. There was one solid purpose for him. That's to get that birthright. There's a real believer today that the world call you whatever they want to. Let them say you're a fanatic if they want to. They call Jesus Beelzebub. How much more will they call you, he said. Amen. Blessed are ye when men shall persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you. Falsely. Amen. For my sake. Amen. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Cause Amen. great is your reward in heaven. Amen. For so persecute they the prophets before you. Amen. You see it? Hallelujah. Now, what is the seal of God then? Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. The what? Amen. Ephesians 4.30, you this morning, grieve not the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I know some of them says it's this or that or the other, but when old matter of the Bible said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be true. Some says keeping days is a mark. Some says doing this is a mark. Some says of being a witness of this is a mark. But the Bible said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed Amen. until the day of your redemption. Amen. How long? Until the day of your redemption. Amen. How can it be done? Could God make a mistake? Could he give a man the Holy Ghost and him being infant nose from the beginning to the end would give a man the Holy Ghost and promise him eternal life and then turn around take it away from him? That would make him finite like me and you. Subject to mistakes, but thanks be to God, our Heavenly Father makes no mistakes. He certainly he can't make a mistake. From the beginning he was in and he will be at the end. He can't make mistakes. He's perfect. Notice, now I'm going back into the, uh, into the Hebrews again. Now be therefore perfect. Now I'm going to strip over now and go into the Revelation. And he calls all, both great, old, young, male and female, bond and free, to receive a mark in their forehead and in their hand. And he deceived all, except those whose names were written in the Lamb's book of life. He deceived all, the whole earth, the religious cults. He received the pretended Christian. He deceived the church member. He deceived the moral man. He deceived the good man. He deceived the so-called preacher. He deceived the so-called Christian. He deceived all with his great propaganda saying we're all one big church and we ought to all unite together and have the things of the world and church and state uniting. What are, we'll settle all wars forever. Thousands of mothers, millions of them will say that's the thing we want. Watch where it comes from, sister. Watch where the backgrounds of it is. And he deceived all whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, are you ready? Here it is. It's a double barrel and a heavy load. Listen at it. Now, he deceived all whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life from the time they joined the church, from the time in the revival. Their names are written in the Lamb's book of life when they come into the church. No. Names are written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation Amen. of the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That does it. Amen. You get it? That's been looked over for hundreds of years amongst teachers. Amen. But look, the Christian's name was not written in the Lamb's book of life when he came to the altar. The Bible said his name was written in the Lamb's book of life all the way from the foundation of the world. No man can come to me except my father draws him and all that comes I'll give him everlasting life and will raise him up for the last days. What we scared about? Listen to me, my weary brother. The Bible said that Jesus was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. Notice. Oh, my. How this burns your heart. How this gives you the hope. Way back before the foundation of the world. When Satan preferred the evil. God being infant looked down through the stream of time and saw the end. For knowledge. If he don't know all things, you have limited God. Amen. You've made him finite, like you and I. Amen. But God is unlimited. Amen. God's power, God's knowledge, everything, he's the omnipotent. Amen. 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 Way back Amen. before the foundation.
foundation of the world. When Satan done the evil, cause Satan had in his mind Amen. what he was going to do, and God seen how he could counteract it. Amen. 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 The Bible said, in the beginning was the Word, St. John 1, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, when time began, it was eternity before that, this is the time we're talking about. Eternity is like a, a panoramic. It never, it never ends. It's a circle. Amen. Continually forever and forever and forever. Amen. It's an endless wheel that never stops and never has an end. Amen. But Satan put a break in there and come down here and we're off the whole thing. But God, seeing where there be a space of time and being the great infant form from beginning to beginning, he looked down. And he was in the beginning the word. Now a word is a thought expressed. God began to think as he began to see every human being that ever come on earth and ever burn and ever flee and ever fly. Yeah. Hallelujah! That's the infant, almighty, eternal, ever yeah. God. That's the one we serve this morning. Way back in the beginning. And he seen that there were some people Amen. who was going to desire to be saved. Some people who were going to want to be saved. Some people who would be loyal in their heart. They wanted to be saved. Then he's got to make a preparation for their salvation. That's right. Or they will never be saved. And he knows that anything imperfect cannot come into heaven. So he has to make a way of protection for Amen. them. Amen. You see it? Then back there, he said, I myself will come down into the world and take on human flesh. And I'll pay the penalty that's required here. And I'll take the place. And I'll Amen. make them perfect because I'll bring them in me. And I am perfect. And Amen. he said, be therefore perfect, even as those that are, the God is perfect. Then here was this mangled body. That was beaten and bruised for sin. And every sin that the world ever had or ever would have was laid upon him. And he is the body that Jehovah raised up on the last day there, of the third day after his death. And if we're in that body, we're just as perfect as the body is. Amen. 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 There you are. How do you get in that body? How do you get in it? The Bible said in Romans 8, 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but the Spirit. They don't care what the world says or what anybody else says or even what their family says. They walk in the Spirit of God in perfect divine love. You see it? How do you get into it? By joining church, by shaking hands, by water baptism? No, sir. Twelfth chapter of First Corinthians said, "By one Spirit we are all baptized into Amen. one body Amen. and become members of that body." Hallelujah. And then it's not what I've done, what I am, who I was, or nothing about it. It's what God has done for me Amen. in Christ, Amen. and we are protected with our sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. He makes no mistakes. Hallelujah. He wouldn't bring you in if you was worthy. He knows your heart. That's right. He knows what you are. He knows your motives. He knows what you are. There's traps all along the road, sure. That they will cause you to stumble. You say, I didn't mean to do that. God, you know it. You're still perfect. Because there's a perfect blood offered for you every day. And a bleeding sacrifice hanging before the throne of Almighty God. That's right. Now, how did you get in there? God by foreknowledge. Now. God said that Jesus, I put on your caps. You would open your heart. Look, the Bible said Jesus was the lamb slain from the world foundation of the world. He was slain. Why? God the Father. When he looked down and seen how Jesus never come just to die a haphazard death. He never come to say, well, maybe somebody have pity. 
when they see the way I died, everything. No, I wasn't. God don't run his business like that. Amen. God runs his business perfect. Amen. Right. He knows exactly what was going to take place. That's where he could foresee. He knows exactly what he, he's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing. But if he's infant, he knows Amen. who will and who won't. Amen. Therefore, you can rest assured, if you have received God and been filled with the Holy Ghost, you're anchored for your eternal destination. Amen. Correctly. See, he foreknows. Now watch. The Bible said that Jesus, the Lamb, was slain before the foundation of the world was ever laid. Oh, I, I know I act funny up here, but I, I, I feel glorious. Look, what? Jesus was slain before the world even had the first speck of dirt laid. Jesus was already slain. Why? Because God, here it is, get it? God, by foreknowledge, when he was the word in the beginning, he perceived the thought. Now it's just a thought. Then when he spoke it, he said, it shall be. Jesus was saying Amen. the very minute God spoke the word. Amen. Then what? 4,000 years later, he come and paid the price that God had already done back here by his word. He had to come. All devils in hell couldn't keep him from coming. God had already spoken. Now, believer, have you got your joy shoes on? <laughs> Listen to this. If you are a Christian, if you are truly a God's child, the Bible said, that's not an old preacher, that's the Bible. It said, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life Amen. before the foundation of the world. Amen. Oh my. The same time that Christ, that God said Christ would be slain, He wrote your name with Him. Amen. Hallelujah. There you are. Your name was written in the, He said, He and He deceived all. Great ball. So many were church members, pretended Christians. He deceived all whose names were not written. Not in the church book, but in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. When? Before the foundation of the world, God wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. By his spoken word and sent Christ to sacrifice to die to redeem that same group that he had wrote their names in the Lamb Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Now, those who he has called, he has justified. He called before the foundation of the world. Those who he called, he has justified. And those who he has justified, he has already glorified yeah. the same God that before the foundation of the world called your name and wrote it on the Lamb's book of life in the from the foundation of the world has already made a place in glory for you and when this earthly tabernacle be dissolved we have one already waiting for us yeah. in glory and there you are that's the gospel Hallelujah. what are we worried about why are we going on looking like this? Well, I just want to... Lift up your head! The Bible said lift up the feeble knees and let the hands raised up the ones hung down. Let him that's weak say I'm strong. Amen. For the gospel is deliverance, it's good news. Amen. And this morning, the Holy Spirit, through the words, bringing you the good news that from before the foundation of the world, God wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. All the devils out of hell can't race it out of there. God wrote it in the Book of Life. Just as sure to have it as God wrote it in there before the foundation of the world. 
Amen. How glorious our Heavenly Father is in His infinite love and His mercy to do that for us. Then be ye therefore perfect, even as your Heavenly Father is perfect. How can you be when it's not my perfection? It's not your perfection. It's his perfection of his word that he chose you and you never chose him. And he brought you into Christ. And you are secured with Jesus Christ. And just as perfect as Christ was before God. For you're not standing with your own. You're standing in him with one thing. I believe God. Amen. Oh, I love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. Or on the other side of Eden. Amen. 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 What a wonderful time it'll be someday. Amen. When you look back down and say, why did I fear? Look at the joy I missed. Young man, young woman this morning. Are you old man or woman who's never been a Christian? God's continually knocked at your heart. Oh yes, you might come in at the end of the road, but you'll have no joy. There'll be no star for hunting to shine. I don't want to stand like that. I want to hear him say, it was well done, my good and faithful Amen. son. I want to show him my appreciation. My poor little old gray-headed wife. How I love to do something for her, but I know she likes it. Amen. Because I love her. And I know she loves me. And if I do that for my wife in the human love, what ought I to do to know that God, yes. by grace, God. before the foundation world seen me, a poor little sinner staggered and was going to hell and couldn't help it. And he foreordained me and put my name in the Lamb's book of life before Amen. the foundation world. Oh, I love him. There's no way at all I'll ever tell him. Amen. Amen. No wonder the Bible said, I have not seen ears, not heard either, has it entered into the hearts of man. Amen. Oh, man. How glorious God is. Amen. Don't you want to trust him? If you're weary and tossed about, shame on you Christians Amen. that call yourselves Christians you. and go around with the weary. Well, I don't know. If I go to church, say, oh, you're a poor excuse. Let me tell you, lift up your head. Straighten up your chest. Yeah. Oh, my. oh, use faith. Amen. Faith is the boss. Yeah. Right. Faith has hands on its chest. Brother, I mean, it's got big muscles. When it speaks, the little words drop from one side to the other. Amen. The devil said, now you just can't make it. You can't do this. You're ashamed to testify. Faith raised up and said, shut up. I got the floor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sure. Amen. Faith takes the initiative. Amen. That's what we need today. Amen. Wherever pilgrim in the land. Straighten up your head. The Bible said, when I was, David said, when I was afraid, I walked with, I trusted him. Amen. When I was afraid, I trusted him. Whenever I come to the, even the fear of death, the shadows, when Paul came down, he said, Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Yeah, Brother, uh, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime with parties leave behind us, footprints on the sands of time. Some day setting out on the celestial hills of glory where the sun will never go to any yeah. city. Where the saints are always yeah. shouting. Those old heroes yeah. of faith looking back down on those places yonder and seeing yeah. a path made of glory. Yeah. I want to sit with them and see that I put my head up in the air and trusted God and walked on in the time yeah. of storm. Oh, my. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee this morning for Jesus we thank Thee for the perfection of the gospel, for the perfecting and the eternal sovereignty of God's eternal spoken word. And according to His word, He called us and chose us in Him before the foundation of the world and wrote our names before the foundation of the world. When God speaks the word, it's got to happen. It's just got to happen. And you spoke our names when you spoke his name. You chose us with him before the world began. So there's nothing we can say we could do, Lord. It's, a, it's not in mankind. There's nothing we can boast on or brag on. The only thing we say is, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord, seeing that we were aliens. But now thou hast perfected us 
with that perfect sacrifice that we stand in. Oh, God, stand in him today as we move on. Thanking you, Father, for these things. We ask that there be one in here today, Lord, that is not in that condition. May they this moment make their one and eternal and final decision before you make your last and final call at their heart. We pray that you'll grant it through Christ's name. And while we have our heads down, I wonder if there's such a person here this morning who is really in the sleeping version. You've never woke up to the realization that you've got to save souls. You've got to do something. And you want God to remember you as a soul savior. You want to be a one who will go out and try to get soul saved. Would you raise your hand and say, God, remember me. God bless you. That's good. All right. Is there such a person here this morning who has never at one time accepted Christ as Savior, but this morning wants to make that final and eternal decision as you see the sun setting out yonder? And you know, it's just a few days more, and we won't be here any longer. You know that. But you want to, you want to come into the kingdom of God. You want God to receive you. And you believe that he does it. And you'll raise up your hand to that effect this morning that you believe that Christ now takes you as his child. God bless you. God bless you. Someone else. You'll take him as your personal Savior this day. You raise your hand and say, from this day henceforth, I now will serve God with all my heart. I believe and I want to be remembered. All my life, something's knocked at my heart, knocked at my heart, and I've turned it down. And I'm afraid I might turn it down the wrong time now. And so this morning, God, by grace, I move out and raise my hand saying, be merciful to me, a sinner. Will there be another? God bless you. And bless you, little girl. I see your hand too, honey. All right. Someone else. Would you raise your hand? Then remember me. Is there a backslider and say, oh, Brother Bram, I'm a Christian, but I'm a poor excuse for one. I'm constantly backsliding and doing what's wrong. And I, I love God. God taught me by grace. I know I'm his child, but I've never been active. I've never done the work of the Lord. I just somehow drift along and in and out and in and out. But something is still holding me in my heart. I'm ashamed of my testimony. I've been ashamed to meet God this morning. Not one soul or nothing. I, I, I want God to bring me back and hug me to his bleeding side and give me my whip and what I deserve and let me be a real Christian from this day henceforth. I'll raise my hand to God. That's what I want you to do, God. God bless you, lady. God bless you, 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 you. That's how God sees your heart. And a lot of you raise your hands. I know you. I know you're up and down life. While you're at rest, Christians are praying. I know your up and down condition. I know your backslidings. God knows them how much better if I knew them. I see you come to the altar, try to make a start, go back, try to make a start, go back. A man just dropped dead a few days ago that used to teach Sunday school here. I'm afraid some of these people here, I call the name. Many of you know who I'm speaking about. That man had come to church, he'd go back, he'd come to church, he'd go back. He wanted to do, right? He had an experience that God, he was a good man at heart. But he got to fumbling with the world too much. He died a young man. He left the world. Now I wonder what his reward will be. See? Don't do that. Don't do that, friend. Stay in the hardest. That man could come back to the earth today and stand down in this city anywhere the very spot he died on. He'd scream and run towards the tabernacle as hard as he could come. Boy, I'll tell you, to be soul saved this next week. When he'd get his ace across the line now, but remember, as long as there is an eternity, as deep as there is a sky, they'll never have another chance to save a soul. Never have another chance to live for God. He's made his final decision. What about yours this morning? Let's make it right for God. While we have our heads bowed, give us a little part on the other side. <clears throat> on the other, now keep praying, of Jordan. Slowly now, all of us. Well, a tree of life is blooming. There is rest for you. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks. Jesus. What's holding you back? 
every feather when he sets you free I will ever ever praise him I will ever ever praise him I will ever ever praise him for he sets me together slowly on the other side of Jordan just across the river yonder in the sweet view of Eden where we are The indifferent fetters, the religious fetters, the denominational fetters, the sinful fetters, the unbelief fetters. Jesus, His presence is near. Every fetter. Just make your decision. When He says, You. Someone else let the fetters be broke from around? Don't you want to be free today? What are you just pretending for? Why, you're only miserable to yourself. If you're not free, the Holy Spirit, all the chunks out of the way, the Spirit of God moving down through your heart. God bless you, sister. On the other side, maybe some little old thing holding you. Don't you want to be saved? I hope our names are wrapped together. God bless you, brother. Hope our names are wrapped together, young and glorious stars of God shining forever. Look over and say, there stands Brother Brown. I say, there you go, brother. Remember down at the tabernacle that morning? There is rest for you. Ever, ever praise him. Don't you want to do it? Will ever, ever praise him. Ah, backslider, don't you want to move up to the altar now? Yeah, that little old something standing your way. Jesus breaks that fetter. Come on. When he says, down at the cross where my Savior down there for cleansing from sin I cry oh there to my heart was a glory to his name. Oh, glory to his precious name. Oh, glory. Sinner, your friend, you at the altar, backslider. Tell him about it now. What was it? There to my heart was 
Lord. You're kneeling there alone with God now. He's looking at you. Not even a sparrow could fall without him knowing. Oh, come to this fountain. Time so rich, sweet, mellow. If you've never received the Holy Spirit, come. He's here. Have the same ears. Oh, plant Jim to and be made. Come to me. Oh, glory to you. Why, with your heads bowed, did you ever notice people who receive Christ? Watch what kind of place they were in, how they got it. You see them act the same way. Certainly, if it's everything worked up and emotional, the child will be raised up like that. That's the way it'll go. If it's cold, formal, and indifferent, it's usually the way they are. They receive that type of spirit because that's what's there working then. Take me to the cross. Amen. Take me to a place where there's a spirit moving. It mellows my heart. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, though I give all my goods to feed the poor, my body to be burned as a sacrifice, have knowledge to know all mysteries and all these things, the law fail. But when that which is perfect has come, which is love, it endureth forever. Love worketh faith. Won't you come now with all this lovely, humble, sweet feeling of the Holy Spirit? Moving here at the altar now. Just kneel down. Say, God, be merciful to me. I want you to give me now in my heart this spirit that's in the church. I now kneel and I ask and by faith I believe that you'll grant it to me. You'll walk away you're one of the most humble, sweetest spirits. It'll all be over then. I am so wondrously safe from sin. Jesus sweetly abide with Hold there at the cross where he took me. Glory to his name. Glory. While we're singing this, I wonder if there's any Christians who'd like to reconsecrate their life with these here at the altar who's come for the Holy Spirit and for salvation. Would you like to kneel up here with us? Pray with us for a few minutes. Anything that you have need of, no matter what it is. If it's sickness, you have need of healing. If it's uh, trouble, you have need of relief. If you're wearied and bothered, need, need of peace, come now. Won't you? Oh, come to this town. Come so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the sea. So glad to see so many coming this morning. Here today and be made on Glory to you. You see, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. He does this. To not emotional. Solid Dean. It's not fanatically. It's not formal. It's love that draws, constrains us. There to my heart was a love, a love. Oh, glory to you. Wonderful. Everyone just bowing now. Don't you love this? I don't know how you feel, but I just feel like in my heart, you just feel teardrops on the inside of you coming down. God's Holy Spirit just moving. He's doing the work. Brother, give me a church like that. 
freely broke off, going down to the potter's house to be remolded. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's the precious found free to all. Let the audience help sing that now while the Penitent ones are at the altar asking. A fall from Calvary's fountain in the cross, in the cross, oh be my glory. God, our Father, we come to Thee today, humbly broken up, the Holy Spirit coming into the Word. Christians are so great and so grateful to Thee that they have accepted You and been born again. Thou has ordained this from the foundation of the world. You have declared, You said, I have many things to tell you that I cannot tell you now. But when he, the Holy Spirit, has come. He will reveal these things to you and will teach you and guide you. We're so thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit that reveals the Word of God. You said and He will bring these things to my to your memory, which I have said unto you. And He'll show you things to come. We're so glad that He is with us today. And through the teaching of the Word and the working of the Holy Spirit has caused Christians to be awakened, caused sinners to come to Thee, backsliders to reconsecrate themselves. Father, they're on the altar. Calls the sick and the weary who's been afflicted to come and bow their heads to accept healing for their body, knowing that Thy spoken Word is truth. Everything else will fail. But thy word can never fail. Truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we come to accept this morning what you have provided for us in your vicarious suffering and the atonement at your death that you made for us. And we freely, Lord Jesus, receive it. We believe the word of God. We believe that you promised. He that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Oh, God, what a promise. No matter what it's for. Thou said, when you pray, believe that you receive what you ask for. You shall receive it. Now, Father, if we truly believe it, it's settled. We believe it. It is done. Then we act upon our confession that you have did it for us. Not that we are worthy, we're unworthy, but through your unmerited grace that we have through thee, we believe that the work is finished. And as these penitent ones and ones who are coming this morning, consecrating themselves, and to those who are coming for the benefits of the suffering, as David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all of mine iniquity, my backsliding, and who healeth all of our diseases. That's the benefits of the believer. And we receive it through faith this morning by coming upon the word of God, which is spoken before the foundation of the world. If it was impossible for it not to happen, so is it impossible for us not to get what we ask for if we ask for it with faith believing. And that lays within our hearts, Lord, to receive what we have asked for. Jesus, keep us near the cross. When the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord, raise up a standard against him. Bless this little waiting congregation. 
God, may your Holy Spirit take these ones who consecrated their lives, these men and women who knelt at the altar, those sinners who come and bowed their heads, take them into thy kingdom. Lord, I realize it's their own personal faith. The minute they believed you, that's the minute you received them. For you said, no man could come unless my father draws him. And all that comes, I'll give him everlasting life and I'll raise him up to the last day. That's your word, Lord. We believe it. And it's done. The work is finished. And we thank you for it. We thank you for the healing of every body, for every wearied soul, for everything that you're, those who had feeble hands hanging out, those who's been fearful, those who's wondered. David said, when I was feared, got scared. Then I trusted in you and walked on. God, let us stick up our heads this morning. Not cowards, but Christians who believe in Jesus Christ. May we walk on with our testimony shining. May through the healing of our bodies, through the testimony of our salvation, may we win others to thee. Grant it, Father, as all on the altar we blame. Grant it for your glory as we believe you and wait on you, Lord. Here is where just bathing in your beauty, just bathing in your promise, feeling that glorious Holy Spirit wooing us to thee. How we love you. How we praise you. How I worship you, Lord. Myself here behind this sacred desk with my hands up to thee. I worship thee, my God. I worship thee. You're my healer, my Savior, my King my provider, my father, my brother, my all in all, rest in thee. You are my strength. I publicly, you, David said, I will praise thee in the congregation of the saints. And I'll give thee praise before the sanctified ones this morning. I praise thee for healing me. I praise you for my life. I praise you for my health. I praise you for the goodness you've showed to me. I praise you for my friends. I praise you for everything, Lord. You're wonderful, joy unspeakable and full of glory. How I praise thee. How I can recommend thee to the weary. How I can recommend thee to the sinner as a savior. How I can recommend thee to the sick as a healer. How I can recommend thee to the wanderer as a king. Oh, how I love thee this morning. How I can recommend you, Lord, to those who are downtrodden, to, to be the joyful joy in the camp. How we thank thee. Oh, you're a rock in a weary land, the shelter of the storm, the Alpha Omega, the beginning of the rose of Sharon, the night of the valley, the morning star. Oh, how we love you, how we adore you and praise you, thy matchless eternal one. We give thee praise. Oh, we'll praise thee and give thee praise through all ages. Receive us, Lord, as we offer these blessings, the fruits of our lips. You said we are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifice, the fruits of our lips, giving praise to his name. How we praise him, how we adore him forever and ever. Oh, receive the very adorations of our hearts. Express our lips, Lord, that from the depths of a pure heart we praise thee, knowing that it's not what we could do. It's not our life. It's his life. It's not our salvation. It's his salvation. It's not our heaven. It's his heaven. Oh, we're not our own works. We're his works. It's not our grace. It's his grace. Not our glory, but his glory. Not our power, but his power. Oh, how we love you. Not our church, but his church. How we praise thee, Lord. That's our hearts, Lord. That's our hearts. Receive us. Oh, God, send a little Branham Tabernacle and outpouring of the Spirit. Will you, Lord? Oh, we're needy here on the corner. God, send down the showers of blessing. Pour out the rain of God, the former ladder. Baptize our pastor anew, Lord. Send him a fire with the gospel. We love him today, Lord. He's your servant. We pray that you'll anoint his heart. And not the hearts of the other preachers in the building this morning. And every member, may we go out of here, Lord. And don't forget your poor, unworthy servant, myself, Lord. That you'll anoint me afresh with the Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. Give us these blessings. We humbly waiting at the altar, knowing that we receive it. Bathing ourselves in your Holy Spirit. And not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God unto salvation. How we thank thee, Lord. Some glorious day. We hope to see you, Lord. 
Lay our hands upon the feet of the one that stands with us today, who we cannot see, but we know that he's here. How we praise him. Out in that city, the sun it will never go down. The flowers are blue forever, and the sun it will never go down. I feel like traveling on. I do. Traveling on, I do. I feel like traveling on. sing the verse, you sing the chorus with me. The first one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist. He died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He preached that the Spirit would save man from sin keeps dripping with blood yes it's dripping with blood this holy ghost god i love it it's dripping with blood the blood of this that the world say what they want to who died for the truth this holy ghost god Blood keeps dripping with blood. Then they stoned Stephen. He preached against sin. He made them so angry. They dashed his head in. But he died in the spirit. He gave up the ghost. 
and went to join the others. That life-giving voice kept dripping with love. This Holy Ghost it's dripping with love. The blood of love who died for the this Holy Ghost God's blood is dripping with love. There's Peter and Paul and John the Divine. They gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mingle their blood with the prophets of old, so the true word of God could honest be told. Amen. Keep stripping with blood, yes, stripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel, it's stripping with blood, the blood of desire. Well, who died for the truth? This Holy Ghost God's blood is dripping with blood. Souls under the altar crying, How long for the Lord to punish those who've done wrong? Listen, but there's going to be more who will give their life's blood for this Holy Ghost gospel and its crimson blood. Amen. Oh, it keeps dripping with blood. Yes, it's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel, it's dripping with blood. The blood of this He's glad this morning that you received the Holy Spirit. Raise up your hands. Isn't it wonderful? Sure. It's dripping with love. Shake hands with your friend standing next to you. Dripping with love. Say praise the Lord, brother, for the Holy Spirit. Ghost gospel. It's dripping with love. All the blood of this side. Who died for the Bless you, brother. Bless you. Uh, it's dripping with love. Oh, it's dripping with love. That's it. Raise up the hands. It's dripping with love. This holy She's been walking out for three years, glorifying God. Now let's sing this good old song. How many likes this? Faith in the Father, faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost, three in the one. All right, sister, give it. Faith in the 
Son, a faith in the Holy Ghost, me and the one. The demons will tremble and sinners awake. A faith in Jehovah will anything. How many loves a good, happy crowd like him? Well, God bless you, sir. This old saying now, everybody at the top of their voice. God bless you. Thank you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. The faith that you gave me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my dear sister. God bless you, sister. Put your hands and sing it now. God be with you till we meet. God bless you, sister. I'm glad to see you up here. Shouting, it's Sister Kelly. You know, she was to be. They, the devil tried to kill her out here in an automobile accident and had her out there at the hospital all Jesus, cut up and said she'd never walk and everything. But God's grace, she was the one who sounded like a salvation army up here this morning. Let's praise the Lord with her. Everybody. I know you're all glad to see your sister in here. Come down and shake hands with her right here at the altar. You all do. Everybody, glad to see you. Woo! Praise the Lord! So we need, so we need, God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Stop and bow our heads just a minute. Will you, Paul, brother, dismisses us? Bow your heads just a minute in prayer, brother Neville, if you will.